Nice to meet you, this is the Hobby IT channel. Thank you for watching today. In this channel, it is a video that challenges making things with IT. Programs and circuit diagrams are available on the website below, so please make use of them. Let's have fun together. This time, I'm going to watch videos on my smartphone. The product to be used is Timer Camera of M5 Stack. This product is a product with a built-in ESP32, and I think it is a cheap product as a camera-mounted product. You will be able to view the images captured by this camera on your smartphone's web browser. Therefore, we will implement a web server and distribution server. First, we will check what kind of things can be realized, including an operation check. I have already accessed it, but I will access the set IP address with the web browser of the smartphone. A screen like this will appear. This time, the image size is SVGA size of 800 by 600. This screen design is like this, but you can change the design to your liking by changing the HTML. It's hard to tell if it's stopped in the video, so I'm holding it in my hand and shaking it a little. If you shake it a lot, you won't know what it is, so I'm moving it to shake it a little. Press this start button to start streaming. The image will stop for a while, but for the time being, it will be delivered as a video. The Wi-Fi signal is a bit poor here, so I think it will be better if the environment and screen size are improved. Click the stop button here to stop the delivery. This clear button then restores the screen. Acquire one image with this one shot button and display it on the screen. It is used when you want to acquire a still image. Also, you can start the distribution as many times as you like. It becomes the above as an operation check. Now let's move on to the table of contents. The table of contents looks like this. First, I would like to proceed with the flow of equipment selection, development environment, Arduino settings, programming, and writing. I would like to proceed to equipment selection. When it comes to equipment selection, I try to find and use the cheapest equipment possible. Some ESP32 cams are sold on Amazon for around 1,500 yen, but the product images do not have the technical conformity mark, so it is basically illegal to use them in Japan. As a reliable product and a web camera for electronic work, these were the cheapest in the range I investigated, so I'll start comparing this product. In the end, I ended up with only products that used ESP32. The two on the left have exactly the same circuit configuration, so they have the same performance and the same function. The further to the right, the better the performance. Among them, the rightmost timer camera is less than 3000 yen and has the best performance, so we will use it. Of course, it also complies with technical standards, so it is legal to use in Japan. There are two types, X and F, but the lenses are different. X has a narrower field of view, and if you want to capture a wide area, use F. This time, I am using the narrow field of view of X. As you can see, this timer camera is a finished product mounted on a board, so there is no wiring. Therefore, I don't know if it can be called electronic work, but programming is done to realize a web server and a distribution server. However, the circuit diagrams are open to the public, and I will understand them if necessary, so I think there are many things I can learn. Move on. A collection of items needed for electronic work. Based on this, we calculated the cost of the comparison table earlier. This Excel format file can be downloaded from the Hobby IT site. Move on. This is the document of timer camera used this time. It is published on the official website. The wiring itself is complete as a product, but the port configuration is used in the settings, so it is necessary to understand how it is wired. Move on. As for the development environment, we will use Arduino. It is widely used for learning all over the world. In addition, there are plenty of functions such as libraries, and there are many learning materials on the internet. It is easy to understand and easy to use, so I will continue to use it this time. Move on. We will set up the Arduino. Configure the board settings for the timer camera used this time. First, add the URL for timer camera from the Arduino IDE settings. Press OK to complete the addition, then start Boards Manager. Enter M5 Stack in the search window and install the latest M5 Stack. Move on. Select M5 Stack Timer Cam in board setting of Arduino IDE. Other settings can be left at their default values, but when writing or using the serial monitor, make sure that the timer camera connection port is selected as the port. Move on. Now add the library. Start the library manager first. Once launched, type timer cam as you can see here. Next, select the same library as here in the displayed library and install the latest version. You will be asked if you want to install all related libraries, but this time, select only this and install it. 
Once the installation is complete, you are now ready to use the Arduino IDE. Move on. Here is the file structure that will be created. There is also a method of handling HTML as a file using SPIFs, which we have implemented in the Smart Remote Control production. However, since there are not many HTML and JavaScript programs this time, we will define them as variables. Even if these three files are described in one file, there is no difference in operation. It is divided into three parts so that it can be easily handled as a program. Move on. Let's check the Arduino program. First, let's talk about loading the library. Next, set the SSID, password, IP address, etc. according to your usage environment. You must make changes to your environment. Next, configure port settings. I grasp the port configuration from the official document of M5 stack and set it here. No special changes are required. Finally, the web server and distribution server are defined. Move on. The setup function starts the serial monitor first. Next, the voltage drop check is described, but this part will not be executed because it will not be stopped this time. I think that it may be stopped if brownout voltage drop errors occur frequently, such as when using a battery. Next, the initial settings of the camera are performed. This determines the image size. This time, the SVGA size is 800 by 600, but it works more stably if the image size is smaller, so I think it's better to change it while assessing the operation according to the environment. However, if you change this size, you also need to change the size of the image tag in your HTML program. Next, set the LED and connect to Wi-Fi. Finally, the web server startup function is called to complete the setup function. Since there is no processing in the loop function, which is the processing during startup, there is no particular confirmation. Let's check the functions defined individually. This is the startup process for the web server and distribution server. First we define the handling of the access URL. Since all the processing is basically a function, we will check the processing contents one by one. Start the web server and distribution server with the following settings. Go to next slide. Next is the processing of the distribution server. This time, instead of handling moving image data like MPEG, we will use a method called motion JPEG that sequentially transmits JPEG data, which is a still image, and shows it as a moving image. This function performs the video distribution process. First define the contents of the send header. Next, the process of acquiring and sending a JPEG image is performed. As I mentioned earlier, the while statement repeatedly acquires and sends a single JPEG of a still image. Next, let's check what kind of data is being sent by this program. This is the transmission data. First, it responds with 200 OK to the HTTP GET request. I will send the image data from the next one, but only the first one is sent with the set header added. The image data itself is divided into multiple packets and sent. When it comes to the second image, it is not the previous image data, but the next image data, which is separated by boundaries and sent. Move on. This defines the process of acquiring and sending only one image when the one shot button is pressed, and the process of restarting the ESP32 when the reboot button is pressed. Move on. I will check the HTML program, but ESP32 does not execute it as a program and treats it as just data. HTML is understood and executed by your smartphone's web browser. This is the contents of the source displayed by right-clicking the screen displayed on the web browser of the personal computer. In the Arduino program, this content is set as a variable. It is divided into three parts. Style sheet, HTML, and JavaScript. Style sheet is for design settings. Set the background color, button size, font size, etc. I am tagging each part in HTML. The favicon you are setting is not particularly necessary. The icon is only displayed on the tab on a computer etc. It is set because it becomes a console error in Chrome etc. Then do the processing with JavaScript. First, when the start button is pressed, an HTTP GET request is made to the distribution server. Then set the source of the image tag to URL. Delivery is now started. After that, the images sent by the web browser are displayed in the image tag in sequence. This completes the distribution start processing. Next, stop processing, screen clear, and one-shot processing are programmed. The web browser itself has a lot of functionality and can be programmed in this way. I have checked the program. Next, we will write the program itself. Writing, timer camera is very simple. First, connect it to your computer with a micro USB-C cable. Next, check the board and port in the Arduino IDE settings. Finally, just press the write button to automatically put ESP32 in write mode and write. I think it works well. When writing is completed, 
it will start automatically and you can use it with a web browser just like the first operation check. We have already confirmed that it works without any problems, so this is the end for this time. We will continue to take on the challenge of making things using IT like this, so please give us a high rating and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.